Hi guys, welcome back to Red Dog Gaming, where today we are going to be answering one simple question. What do Warhammer 2 and Rome Total War have in common? And why does this particular trait make them so popular? Whether you're wearing your nostalgia tinted glasses or your current swanky Ray-Bans, why does it make those games so popular? Now, without stating the obvious, these games are some of the most fondly looked upon, well-reviewed, and popular games in the Total War franchise. Not only were they highly polished and well-made games for their time, <coughs> Rome 2, <coughs> they also had bags of this one thing. Well, what is this one thing, of course? And, of course, it is a huge and high degree of rampant replayability. Now wait, 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 before you click off this video and say that it's done and that all the games are replayable, we're going to be talking about in detail why these games might be more replayable than some of the other Total War games and where that replayability comes from. So let's take a deep look at this as to why Warhammer 2 and Rome Total War are so popular and why some of the other games might not be as popular because they don't have this trait at the same level. But first things first, let's get into the first section of the video. What is replayability? Replayability is designed as the quality or fact of being suitable or worth playing more than once. Now that is a load of word garbage and gobbledygook thrown at you, but essentially this means you want to play a game a bunch of times for a bunch of time and or in a bunch of different ways. When I personally look at the games that I've replayed a lot over the years, replayability has generally come in the form of three separate elements that a replayable game has one or a combination of more than one of these traits. So replayable games don't necessarily need to just have one of these traits, but I'm gonna talk about each trait in turn that I have found has led me to replay games a lot. So let's talk about trait one. Trait one is an adrenaline-fueled gameplay often shared with friends. So this could be something like Call of Duty, this could be Battlefield, this could be Rocket League, but it doesn't always have to be such a high octane experience. Games like Among Us play on that adrenaline and suspense mechanism that's present in all of us, heightened by playing with others. These games often do have a leveling system and these games, although you're often playing on the same map or same place within the game with pretty similar loadouts, pretty similar equipment, all that sort of thing, they give you a sense of variability because you're always playing different players with different styles, different loadouts, and different abilities. Now, it's safe to say that single player Total War doesn't really fit this, but multiplayer does tend to fit this trend. But looking at my poll on my channel recently, I don't think many of you are here for the multiplayer. Check out my Napoleon Total War online videos though, guys, please. <laughs> Now, let's talk about trait two. Well-crafted storylines that are often offer consequential choices. These are games like Undertale, Witcher 3, or Mass Effect. These games offer the player choices that affect both the gameplay and the story, most of the time at the same time, leading you to play again to see where the other storylines might have taken you, or even to challenge yourself to you know, present a certain storyline at the end of the game like Undertale. Total War kind of has a basic premise of this, especially in Warhammer 2, where they've tried to build story into factions and races and give you choices that do directly impact your gameplay. If we look at a mod like Divide and Conquer, probably the best Total War mod of all time, guys, just saying, uh, where special scripts offer you choices based on actions you've taken, affecting troops you can recruit, buildings you can build, and other factions' relations with you. Despite all this, 
However, this is probably not the main replayability element of Total War. So let's get on to trait three. Trait three is about playstyles. Playstyles that are varying greatly, often in their setting, gameplay and difficulty. This of course is where Total War mainly fits in. But other games that really epitomize this are games like EU4, Crusader Kings, March of the Eagles. <coughs> no, I might be joking about that March of the Eagles one, guys. But yeah, Paradox games generally have this in spades. Now, these ele elements in Total War go as follows. Variation in setting is the story of your nation, its surrounding enemies, starting position and strength, as well as the overall setting of the whole game. Now, variation in gameplay is variation in troop, troop types, building rosters, special scripts and abilities, and in the newer ones, technology, as time goes on. Variation in difficulty is an understanding that playing the Western Roman Empire in Attila is most definitely not the same as playing the Julii in Rome Total War. Now, out of all these three elements of the playstyle variation, gameplay is by far the most important, but it is linked to setting intrinsically and setting and gameplay affect the difficulty. But this is something we'll cover in the next section. All of the Total War games have variability in playstyles to different extent, some much more than others. And let's get on to that. So why are Rome Total War and Warhammer 2 so replayable and why others aren't now that is the real question here so we've established that the main re replayability aspects of total war come from the variation in playstyles available which is mainly affected by the gameplay and setting so if we look at warhammer 2 creative assembly have done an amazing job of recreating the various races genuinely an amazing job and their traits in a total war game. From the High Elves to the Skaven, although the bare bones are similar, you're still playing the same game, you still conquer provinces, assert your influence and play battles with the same controls and setup. Each faction or race feels very unique and this is an extremely compelling element of replayability. We've even gone so far in Warhammer 2 as to give factions unique abilities, unique quest lines, storylines to follow, and unique tech, tech trees with even unique systems for tech advancement. It's safe to say that this is probably the greatest variability in gameplay a Total War game has ever seen, and probably will ever see because it's a fantasy world. And as said, it leads to repeatedly compelling gameplay and campaigns. Now, if we look at something much older like Total War Rome, which laid the now ancient foundations, get it, get it, for a game like Warhammer 2, we see much of the same. Huge variability in playstyle based on which nation you pick. If you want to play Horse Archer Death Stack, then play Parthia. If you want to play Roman Conquest, of course you can. If you want to poke the enemy to death with long pointy spears, pick Greece. Um, seriously guys though, why do you love that so much? And this dynamic can go on and on. There are very few carbon copy nations and each culture group has very distinct playstyles, different building rosters and hugely varying troop types and availability. Why do you think there are whole YouTube channels mainly devoted to playing the Divide and Con Conquer mod on Medieval 2? When you watch Izzy's Let's Play as Mordor, then as the Reunited Kingdom, not only do you know you're going to get great quality videos, shameless plug for Izzy there, and commentary, but you know the gameplay is totally unique to that faction. Although this is a slight tangent, this is why I do believe Divide and Conquer is the greatest Total War mod ever. Beside all the other obvious things, it's Lord of the Rings. Now, let's look at some games that don't have this variability. And I'm sorry Shogun 2 stands. I really am. I love Shogun 2 as well. I have to start with Shogun 2. 
and Fall of <coughs> the Samurai. <sighs> now, I love Shogun 2. It was the first game that showed me the potential for the new engine. Because, not being funny guys, Empire did not do that. Napoleon showed its potential um, as a shooter. Um, sort of um, a gunpowder mechanism for the engine. But it didn't show melee capability really. Um, so Shogun 2 really did show me that this engine does have potential. However, if Shogun 2 shows us anything, it's that faction special abilities can never substitute for variability in unit and building rosters. And Shogun 2 often feels like you're fighting the same battles on the same fort map against the same enemies over and 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 over a whole big loop of deja vu and don't get me started on fall of the samurai hence why after i've played one campaign in shogun 2 i sit back relax sip a cup of tea and press the unholy uninstall button but wait 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 guys this really isn't Shogun 2's fault necessarily, on all even creative assemblies to some extent. Remember that setting thing that we talked about earlier? Yeah, of course, that's the reason. The setting for Shogun 2 is a time period and place where cultures and warfare were relatively similar across a geographical area. And in this, creative assembly have limited their scope for gameplay variability and therefore the key element here which is replayability the ancient world of course is highly diverse and fractured with very unique cultures and warfare styles across the mediterranean and beyond the warhammer universe is highly diversified with multiple different races with unique histories and cultures very richly expressed even empire a game which I freely admit I have a big soft spot for. Struggles from much of the same problem as Shogun 2. Although they do offer some nice variability with the three theatres of war and some interesting unique nations, especially with mods. If you play one of the major nations often, your game will devolve into line of men in X colour coat firing into line of men in Y color code. This repetitiveness of style is much less prevalent in a game like Warhammer 2 or Rome Total War. But as I say, this is often not the fault of the game itself, but the setting Creative Assembly have placed it in. So to conclude, games like Warhammer 2 and Rome Total War, what they have in common is a very, very high degree of replayability uh, on a game style that we all love to play, a Total War style. Because of this, they have a great variability in gameplay styles derived from a very variable setting that CA choose for the game. Sometimes the setting does limit this, but Creative Assembly could do more in future, I'd say, for some of these games to avoid repetitive gameplay even in repetitive settings, like more impactful, unique units, abilities, and tech trees. Creative Assembly have openly stated that they are planning on developing a historical title next after Warhammer 3, so let's all hope they set it in a time period and place that allows the scope of unique gameplay and thus replayability that we've all come to love with Rome Total War and Warhammer 2. That's not too much to ask, is it?